Did you know? The rough grouse is the most widely distributed native grouse in North America and the most successful survivor of its group. Partners in Flight estimates that the global breeding population is 18 million, with 14% living in the U.S. and 86% in Canada. They are the state bird of Pennsylvania. Their lifespan is a short one, averaging less than one year. However, birds that survive their first year often live two to three years. Unlike a lot of other species of birds, very few rough grouse make it to seven or eight years of age. This chicken-like bird is a heavily patterned medium-sized grouse measuring about 40 to 50 centimeters long and weighing about one to one and a half pounds. They like dense forests, and as with most grouse, they spend the majority of their time on the ground. Sometimes they are incorrectly referred to as partridge, often confused with the gray partridge, which was introduced to Canada from Europe and only distantly related to the rough grouse. Also, unlike rough grouse, which is a bird of woodland, the gray partridge is a bird of open areas. Rough grouse don't migrate and will live their whole life within a few hectares. This grouse comes in two color morphs, gray and red. The colors worn by these grouse seem to be related to their habitat, with the gray morphs living in lighter bush and the red morphs living in dark forests. This helps them to camouflage themselves from predators. Also, the gray morphs dominate the northern parts of their range, where the weather is more severe, and the red morphs dominate the southern part of its range, where the weather is more mild. The tails of rough grouse vary even more in color, with as many as 58 variations found in the upper Midwest. Normally, rough grouse are solitary, however, during fall or winter, small groups of unrelated birds sometimes form to take advantage of productive feeding spots. They are very shy for the most part, but occasionally they can be aggressive and have been known to run at humans in their territory. In the early hours of morning or in evening during spring and fall, an accelerating deep thumping noise can be heard through the northern forest that is quite similar sounding to an engine starting up. The unexpected culprit, a male rough grouse standing on top of a log, stump, or rock. It is known as the male rough grouse's signature drumming display, but it doesn't involve drumming on anything but air. This is how the Cornell Lab of Ornithology's website, All About Birds, explains how they make this noise. As the bird quickly rotates its wings forward and backward, air rushes in beneath the wings, creating a miniature vacuum that generates a deep thumping sound wave that can carry up to a quarter of a mile. This is how they attract females for mating and also how they proclaim territory. Most birds use a log, stump, or rock to drum from, and they may drum from the same spot using the same log or stump for years. This drumming has earned him the nickname of drummer, or thunder chicken, and native people called the rough grouse the carpenter bird because it was thought it drummed by beating its wings against a log. It's possible to stimulate the bird to drum by beating your fist on the ground. When a female approaches a drumming male, he will expand the ruff of feathers around his neck, arch his tail feathers into a broad band, and strut around while nodding his head. The rich black ruff of neck feathers they expose during courtship is where the name ruff was derived from. When in full display with tails fan, males look twice their normal size. The scientific name for ruff grouse is Bonisa umbellus. Both terms are from the Latin bonisa, which means good when roasted, and umbellus meaning sunshade, which refers to the rough or dark colored neck feathers. When the male is in display, these are erected and surround his head almost like an umbrella. Even though there is at least one hen in the woods for every male, pair bonds aren't developed between males and females. Occasionally, rough grouse nests are parasitized by ringneck pheasants or wild turkeys that lay eggs in the nests. Grouse chicks are precocial, meaning that as soon as they have dried following hatching, which is about 24 hours later, they are ready to leave the nest and start feeding themselves. 
They are not much larger than a man's thumb when they leave the nest and are very mobile, moving further than a quarter of a mile a day by the time they are three or four days old. Flying begins when they are about five days old, which is described as looking like giant bumblebees in flight. They grow rapidly, increasing from half ounce when hatched to 17 to 20 ounce fully grown young birds 16 weeks later. That is a 38 to 46 fold increase in weight. Rough grouse eat a variety of different foods, such as green leaves, fruits, and some insects. They have also been known to eat snakes, frogs, and salamanders as well. When snow covers the ground during winter, rough grouse are almost exclusively flower eaters, living on the dormant flower buds or catkins of trees, such as aspens, birches, cherries, and iron wood. They eat fast. In 20 minutes, a grouse can swallow enough buds to make it through the day. It is able to do this thanks to its crop, a wide portion of the esophagus which acts as a storage chamber for consumed food. With a full crop, the grouse flies to a protected area where it can safely digest its meal. Eating in this way helps minimize the risk of getting attacked by a predator. To get around in tough snow during winter, fleshy projections begin growing on the sides of their toes starting in September. The projections increase the surface area of their feet and work the way snowshoes do, allowing the grouse to walk across the snow better. It also helps the grouse to grip on icy branches. On winter nights, if the snow is soft and a foot or more deep, the rough grouse will bury itself in the snow, creating an insulated air-filled snow tunnel. This is known as snow roosting. To build the snow tunnel, first they plunge from a tree into the snow, then they use their wings and feet to extend the tunnel, sometimes as much as 10 feet. Research has shown that these snow tunnels can reach 32 degrees Fahrenheit and rarely fall below 20 degrees, even when it is much colder outside. This is a great way for the grouse to conserve energy and hide from predators, but snowshoers and skiers sometimes get a frightworthy surprise when the birds burst out from beneath the surface. If there isn't enough snow to roost in, they will rely on conifer stands for protection from the elements. In the northern states, Canada, and Alaska, rough grouse numbers have risen and fallen in a somewhat predictable pattern for most of this century in what is often called a 10-year cycle. These cycles move across the continent more as a wave, beginning in the far northwest and northeast and progressing southward and southeastward. The factors responsible for these periodic fluctuations remain poorly understood and may involve a number of different factors interacting with one another in different ways at different times. Rough grouse are popular game birds, and because of this, game management efforts in North America began as early as 1708 when New York had a closed season, no hunting in part of the year on rough grouse. The early conservationist Aldo Leopold wrote of the rough grouse. The autumn landscape in the north woods is the land plus a red maple plus a rough grouse. In terms of conventional physics, the grouse represents only a millionth of either the mass or the energy of an acre, yet subtract the grouse and the whole thing is dead. That's all for this episode and I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a few new things about the rough grouse that you didn't know before. Happy birding!